who they say is sitting in the corner of the moon after her hammock flung her there on her 193rd birthday. But even Oman Famata's misfortune was nothing compared to that of Bessa, whose curse was not only her inability to die, but also the way death mocked her. Before Bessa was born, Oman Yapu, old, bitter, widowed, was living only two houses down from Kati, Bessa's pregnant mother. Oman Yampu had a pudgy orange cat whom she beat regularly to numb her loneliness. The village elders warned Oman Yampu of what the spirits had told them about beating cats, but she disregarded them. She was powerless to her pride, and she hoped she would make the spirits angry enough to reunite her with her deceased love. When Kano, Charlie the fisherman's slave, knocked on Oman Yampu's door to deliver her the fish that her nets had caught, the pudgy cat stared hoggishly at the tin bucket. He hid behind the fire pit as Oman Yampu closed the door in Kano's face and inspected the bucket for any sign of pilfering. When the cat's head peeked around the pit, she grabbed a fish from the bucket and waved it at him. You would not touch it, she yelled, shaking the fish. Scales, salt water, and blood flew, and the cat dodged Oman Yampu's warning. That night, when Kano finished his chore of cleaning fish for Charlie's wife, he blew the light from the last lantern away. The whistle his compressed lips made married the pungent smell of fish and journeyed through the village circle to Oman Yampu's house, awakening the cat. The cat rose from the corner where he'd been lying and probed the room. Oman Yampu's leg twitched, and she snored expletives into the night. 